Welcome back to the Jasmine Star Show. I have to tell you, friends, I have to tell you that recording a podcast in real time around live coaching is something I have never done before. <laughs> and I was not prepared for it. So if you are listening to this podcast episode without any context, let me bring you up to speed. I invited my good friend and mentor, Rory Vaden from Brand Builders Group to come in. And I had invested in what he was doing because I wanted to help him really help craft this new iteration of my brand. And so I had this idea, I'm going to bring Rory on my podcast, and we were going to talk about things that are preparing for a two-day coaching mentorship session in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, 30 seconds before I'm about to press record, Rory's like, hey, Jasmine, so instead of talking about how to prepare, let's just start the session. Like, let's coach you right now. <laughs> to which all of a sudden, I'm like, we're about to jump off a cliff here, bro. And he said, yes. And then I agreed. And the feedback from the podcast has been so amazing. And so with that, I want to say, Rory, welcome back to the podcast because we spilled the tea the first time. I, I cried, Rory. I cried on the- I, You cried. I, I, I just, well, it was like a gangster tear because it I, my eyes welled up, but the tear didn't fall. So was, I could still hang on to that like gangsterness. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got a little emo. I felt very exposed and vulnerable and it, yeah. it brought people into the process of that is when it's a creative artistic process you feel very exposed and you feel like yeah. there's a right answer and a wrong answer when there's not. And you guided me through that and people heard. And then I have heard that people are listening to it two or three times and they're, they're actually taking away the questions and the frameworks that you helped me with to apply to their business. And so first and foremost, thank you for that episode. Welcome back. Happy to have you. Yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, I've never done that where we kind of like did a live coaching session. Then you came to Nashville. We spent two days together. And now this we're doing like, I guess we're just this kind of like the, the debrief recap and application for everybody um, of where, of where, where, where do they go after the first episode? Absolutely. And so one thing that I, I, I want to focus on the why. So let's, I, I like when good movies start with the end at the beginning and you're like, uh, Oh, yeah. I like, like I, I'm interested, like peak my interest. And so let's start with the end. Now the end is how does one after doing the work to build their brand, actually make money. Like how do, how do we get new leads? How do we convert those leads? How does this actually become a force of nature within our business? Hey, did I hook you? Like, yeah. did, did we do that? Okay. Okay. So now we're going to get, now we're going to get into the middle part of it. So we'll have like a little bit of time to actually uh, talk about what happened in Nashville. Cause people want to, like a couple people were saying, okay, Jasmine. So what happened after getting coached after discussing this idea that you really want to start building a brand and talking about resilience, what happened? So Rory, instead of me telling it from your perspective, what was really happening for us as we deep dove into the process? Yeah. So, so what you came through was uh, our signature sort of flagship experience called finding your brand DNA. And you remember the, the, the single best piece of personal branding advice that I've ever heard was from Larry Wingett, which is find your uniqueness and exploit it in the service of others. And so we developed a process called Finding Your Brand DNA, which helps you extrapolate your uniqueness. Um, we believe that you are most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. So before we can build a speech, we have to understand your identity. We have to understand who you are. We have to understand God's divine design of your humanity. And it answers the question, why have you experienced the pain you have experience? Why have you had the challenges and the, the setbacks and the obstacles? It's because those things have prepared you to go back and serve other people, right? So we start there. And then what we did when we were together is we then extrapolated that. We started the process of, of our, our next stage, which we call captivating content. Which okay. Is then, can I pause here? Can I pause here? Sure. Captivating content. Put a, put, a, put a pin in that. So let's actually distill down what actually happened is Rory said two really powerful things to exploit, exploit your, unique, again, exploit your uniqueness you, in the service of others. Yeah. To exploit your uniqueness in the service of others. And number two, which is what a lot of the uh, people were tagging me in stories or sending me DMs. And they had said that it was really powerful for them to hear that we are, m we are best suited to serve a version of who we once were. Yep. And so in the coaching, what I didn't realize, which is the alchemy that like Rory and his team does was there was a time in my life where I was powerless and I felt like a victim of my circumstances. 
And it wasn't until I decided to become resilient, but at the time I wasn't making the cognizant decision. Oh, I'm going to become resilient. It was just get back up. And it was in the process of doing the work that I look back and I say, oh, that is me. And if I can help people get back up, if I can help people keep going one more day, that I could put my head on my deathbed and be like, I lived a great life. And so when I am able to connect the dots here for listeners, I want listeners to have that same experience. If you take nothing else, if you take nothing else to use your service, to use your skill set in the service of others and to serve who you once were. So I wanted to connect the dots there. So now we're now we can move on to the point where I asked you to put a pin in it. All right. Yes. Yeah. So once we find a person's uniqueness, then we extrapolate it into a body of work, um, like uh, intellectual property. So this is a process we call captivating content. So then it's like we have to then go, okay, now we got to get inside Jasmine's hair, head and we have to pull out everything she has learned about how to develop resilience and how do you coach yourself and how have you coached other people and what are the stories, the signature stories from your own life that taught you the lessons that you know. So you're not regurgitating other thought leaders. You're not repackaging things. Mm -hmm. You're forwarding the thinking that has been done and we're creating your own trademark worthy frameworks, your own intellectual property, your own uh, visuals and uh, things that we call pillar points, which are basically these quotable moments. Um, and there's there's the six pillar point formulas that we take people through to help them figure out to where it's like, it's sort of like you're, you could think of it as a book, right? You'd be, you'd be going, this is the journey of sort of writing the book. And we go, okay, what is the method for how someone who feels powerless, how someone who feels like a victim, how do we educate them. Why do they feel that way? What We call that the cause, right? So the problem is powerlessness, but then there's the cause of why do they feel that way? And then we have to build the system to go, how do we move somebody from powerlessness? How do we move them from that all the way to resilience and teaching them how to get back up in the moments when they feel weakest? And so we create that content. Okay. That's can, I put, can I pause content. here? Can I pause here? Sure. Because you, it's your show. You can do whatever you want. Well, I, I really, so what happens is like you, uh, sometimes when you speak to people who are so passionate and clearly, clearly like uh, leaders in their field, you use language and nomenclature and a cadence, which feels very normal to you, but to an outsider who's like nowhere near your league, I'm like, oh, oh slow down, oh, slow down, oh, special smoke in the back. <laughs> so I want to say like, he says, oh, we're creating this content and these quotable moments. And to me, this was very foreign language, but all he is simply saying is we're taking what you already know. We're taking who you are. And then we're just creating banks of content. Hey, Jasmine, what are you about? What do you want people to say about you? How do you want people to feel? Okay, these are all things that if we are not in control of that, somebody else will write our story. And so for a while, I hate even admitting this, that I got caught up in editing somebody else's story about me mm. instead of writing my own dang story. And so up until this point, I became a really great editor. And as I'm at this inflection point in my life and my business and my word for the year is rebirth, which means I have to do things differently. And this meant investing with Rory and saying, I need help figuring out how to write who I am to become. Now, there's people here, I'm like, I don't want to write a book. I don't want to become a speaker. I don't want to have a podcast. No problem. But let me just tell you this. I am also in the process of rebranding my website. And I started the process rebranding my website after having conversations with Rory because I didn't want to go into my website saying, this is how I've always done it. No, no. So now that I know what I want to be about, and now that I know the frameworks of who I am, and now I'm ready to write my story, my website becomes the story I am to tell. And I wouldn't feel as confident about it when he talks about this quotable moment. I would feel like that sounds intimidating, but actually in the process of working together, we started creating like these, like my beliefs, my mantras. And guess what? On my website, I wanna put one of my quotable moments on my website. That wouldn't have happened 
if I was editing a story that I had told myself or editing a story that somebody else had said about me, I'm writing the story now. And that's just like kind of a key point that I want people to actually say, oh yeah, this is actually for my business. This is not like a, oh, I want to be famous or I want to be great, or I want to make feel good about myself. This is actually business foundational stuff that will actually make me money in the future. Totally. Okay. Totally. Cool. So, so, and then, in, and then in our case, we then moved into uh, one of our curriculums called World Class Presentation Craft, which is then taking that content, polishing it for the spoken word, because we believe there's two ways, and and this is where you start to move out of the art, the 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 um, like the identity piece into the very tactical and we start teaching like practical tactical techniques that can transform your uh, charisma transform your ability to present not just as a speaker but somebody who is on camera on podcast interviews and we believe that actually the fastest way to generate leads for a personal brand are referrals from people you know and presentations going out and doing presentations but presentations doesn't mean you have to get on an airplane and stand on a stage. Mm -mm. It's going live on social. It's doing yep. videos on YouTube. Yep. It's yes. going on other people's podcasts. Yes. It's it's doing, you know, 60 second reels, but people have to experience you. They have to, in order to buy you, they have to have an experience with you. First, they have to know you. They have to find you. Then they have to have an experience with you. Then they trust you. And then once trust takes place, then a transaction can take place. And so we spent a lot of time crafting your actual presentation. In your case, which would is very much being designed for stage, right? It's really stagecraft. But all of the same mechanics apply to anybody. And going out and speaking and uh, doing presentations is the fastest way for, to build trust. I mean, you can think about this. Think about your favorite speaker, right? Or your, like you can, or a, a YouTube or a podcast interview, right? Mm -hmm. You could, you could, have never have heard of somebody before, never have heard their name. And the, the shortest distance between a complete stranger and someone becoming a lifelong fan is a one hour world-class presentation. You could hear one interview of someone on a podcast and go, I never heard of, I never heard of that person before, but I am, I am in, I am buying what they're about. I believe in what they're saying and, and I want more. And that's what you have to be able to do. But you can't you can't be sort of just spontaneously throwing out random quibs and quotes and ideas. It's got to be tight and polished and clear and clean and crisp because attention is so sacred and so scarce that when you get somebody's attention, whether it's on a webinar or it's on a social media live or a podcast or a TV interview or it's an actual stage, it, it has to be, you want to be sharp and tight and crisp so that people go, I get it. I'm experiencing the value. And then I want, I want more. So, um, okay. Can we pause there? Don't, sure. don't forget the Don't forget the next thing that you were going to say. So Rory had said the quickest way to do this is a one hour presentation. There might be people being like one hour presentation. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. I want to reverse engineer what this actually looks like in a practical way. Cause you know, your girls from the hood. So it's just like, I'm trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. So if I'm going <laughs> to be investing something, I'm not going in being like, great. I have a one hour keynote. No, no. I'm going in to be like, this is the foundation. Now my job as a creative chef is to break it up in as many ways possible to start practicing. And so what we have is like this idea of this presentation, right? Like we've worked on it and, slowly building out a presentation, but I cannot stand on a stage and give that yet, period, the end, because there's this art and science of understanding what my new voice, what my new cadence and what my new beliefs are. So I thought to myself, myself and the team came together and we thought to ourselves, how can we start splicing up pieces of this content so that you could start testing it and see what's resonating and how to shape what you're going to say to different audiences? And totally. so right now, and this is the messy middle and Rory, I feel so intimidated, but one of the things I'm really excited about is I want to go in and, and teach 20 minute segments of the presentation inside of the social curator group as a value add. And I want to be doing this. And so I'm going to be standing, I'm going to be on zoom. I'm going to be standing up as if I'm giving a virtual presentation. Totally. And then what I'm going to do is I'm like, what feedback, where did people pop? Where did it get really quiet? Then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to go to them and be like, this was a practice. What was really good? 
What was not better? How should I be? What kind of examples can I be using? So I'm going to go into a community that really already knows me as like their coach, as a business strategist. And then I'm going to put myself in front of them and say, help me get better. Because when I get better, we get better. And when we get better, we change not just our businesses and not just our lives. We change communities. We change where we live and we change the world that we dwell in. So I want people to take it part. I'm not paying for a 60 minute keynote. I'm paying for a way to learn how to speak differently to grow my business in a new way. So yeah, you. totally. And I think a great book or a great speech or a great course or a, a great, you know, a, a great one hour presentation should not be a hypothesis. It should be a conclusion. Ooh, say it again. Meaning, right? Like when you write a book, it shouldn't be, here's some thoughts I have. It should be, I've tested this out. I've Ooh. shared this content. I've Ooh. taken clients through it. I've lived it myself. I've created it. I've yes. adapted it. It's gotten feedback. And by the time you get it in a book, Ooh. it's not a hypothesis. It's a conclusion. By the time you see me on stage, you know, when people go, Oh my gosh, that was incredible. You go, yeah, I've spent 12 years Amen. testing out everything, the content, the jokes, Preach. the frameworks, the stories, and what you're experiencing is a, a, a finished a finished product. And 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 that's what it takes. So there is there is that that art form piece which is your identity and who you are, and then there are there's technical pieces in terms of presentations, which we talked about. And, and then we need to get to money because that's where this all starts to come together. But um, I'll just give an example that people underestimate how much charisma is manufactured. Ooh. People don't realize that charisma and emotion and being compelling is something that you can, you can learn. And, and so, you know, we, we went through several of the techniques, but I'm going to share one of them right now. That's just really, really quick. And this is just called the power pause. And it is the most effective, the single simplest, fastest, most effective technique there is. And what people don't realize is that you can change the way the audience is feeling by a mechanical change in your delivery. And there's several different techniques around that, but one of them, the easiest one is to use pauses. And I can illustrate this just by saying, like, if I say, Jasmine, pauses are powerful. That's how most people would say it. But if I say it to you, I say, hey, Jasmine, pauses are powerful. You have a completely different experience, right? Like you feel this, and and that's just an example. You know, those are those are little tricks I learned on my way to the World Championship of Public Speaking and all that. Where you go, I was an introvert. Like I'm a nerd. My undergrad was accounting. Like I was the shy kid. I'm not the one to go. Oh, I'm going to stand on stage in front of thousands of people. And you might not be either. But when somebody buys from you, okay, there's two things that have to happen. First, trust must take place before there's a transaction. Trust must take place before there's a transaction. So they have to trust you. So they have to learn something. The second thing that happens before there's a transaction is there must be emotional buy-in. You have to move people emotionally. They have to have an experience, right? Where they go, I love this person. I believe in this person. I, I, want, I want to be a part of what they're doing if they're gonna be a lifelong fan. And a lot of that is, is are things that you can you can do just through learning a few polished presentation techniques, um, which ultimately are in some ways just sort of like show business. And really it's just on the way of leading us to how do we make money? Okay. How do we how do we monetize a personal brand? And I keep on pausing you like to get to that point. People are like, Jasmine, stop talking. I'm like, no, wait, 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 wait. So Rory, okay, now this is time. Like, I didn't actually think I was gonna share the story, but we had about 45 minutes left on day two. And Rory had said, okay, Jasmine, based on what we've gone through, we can do X, Y, or Z. And one of the options was for him to um, look at, what do we call them? Like just videos, videos of me speaking. Yep. And I said, I would really love, I've never had somebody go through my content and give me feedback. Because one of the things that Rory explained to me was the power of the pause. 
And what he was doing when he was looking through my video, it, he would say, pause it. And then he would say back the thing I said, exact same thing. And all I did was pause because what I ha what happens, and I, I know that it was happening, but Rory called it out and said, when you get nervous or when you want people to pay attention, you speak fast. And that's fine. There is a time for that, but you're not counterbalancing it by talking slowly. Now there's somebody here who's just like, I'm not going to be a public speaker. No problem. I am going to start leveraging this tool in video because what happens is I've trained myself to speak so fast on TikTok in reels because I want to get attention. I don't want people to put you know, peel away, but to understand that my goal isn't just to get more views. My goal is to get a future client or customer, period. So even if I have a video that w performed the worst, but it got me a client, that's the win. That's the reason why I'm doing this. Now, as one of the things that we were watching in the videos was that he was pausing and he was talking about a different thing. And I want to talk about this because it pertains to content specifically, not just the stage performance. That oftentimes I stand on a stage and I talk and things happen naturally. I don't have a scripted thing. And so I was uh, talking and I made a comment that I said, sometimes we come to these conferences and we want to use exterior things to validate who we are. And oh, have you seen the size of my newsletter list? And then I went on with the rest of the story. Now, Rory said, pause that, Jasmine. He's like, there is the ability to change the energy in the room if you were okay and confident enough to stick in the joke. And I was like, oh, Rory, but that wasn't planned. I was just like, have you seen the size of my newsletter list? And Rory had said, well, <laughs> what if you, he's like, what is something that you could say on the back of that? He's like, that was an innuendo. We talk about, have you seen the size of, in a different way? And then you said, newsletter list. And you're in a room full of like business people. It's like a little chuckle. Ha ha. He's like, but you could actually sit in the humor to get people back captivated. He's like, no, obviously this is just coming off the top of my head, but you know, have you seen the size of my newsletter list? The curves on that thing, <laughs> the way it moves. And yes. I, I mean, obviously that, like, that joke is kind of like, <laughs> wah, wah. but he's just, what he was saying was just stick in it that you don't have to talk fast and you don't have to be extra and you don't have to be the most confident. You could just be okay sitting in the pockets that people rush through. And so you might not want to get into public speaking, but doing that in regards to content, written, audio, and visual are powerful things to build trust. Why do we want to build trust? We want to build trust so people go on the journey. When they're on the journey, they are most likely to become a future customer or client in the future. Rory, thank you for allowing me to extend that so that we're making it applicable, not just to public speaking. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, you made a good point there about, about the purpose of the video, right, is to generate a client. And yeah. I think this is something where this is right where we start to cross over into monetization. I think too many personal brands are consumed with the width of their reach that they are forgetting about the depth of their impact. Ooh, say it again. Mm. You don't need to be so focused on the width of your reach if you're focused on the depth of your impact. Right. For most personal brands, they're going to make money not by having more and more followers, but that's what everybody is consumed with. How do I get more followers, more followers? But there's there's two ways to make impact in the world, right? There's width and there's depth. You you could have a lot, you could have a million people you know, watch a 60 second reel, or you could adopt a child, right? They're, they're, one is width, the other is depth. And the depth of impact is really how you transform the world, is through depth. It's also how you make money. This is something we call the law of AJ Vaden. So AJ is my wife, um, she's our CEO. Um, you know, AJ took a, she took an assessment one time, uh, her Bible study did this assessment about what is your spiritual gift. And she found out that her spiritual gift is making money, which is wow. awesome. Like, oh my God, give me that gift, please. Sugar God, mama, sugar mama. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, right? Sugar <laughs> mama. And um, she, we call this the law of AJ Vaden because one of the things she says is she goes, y'all, you don't need millions of followers to that's make right. millions of dollars. Amen. You do not need millions of followers to make millions of dollars. Even today, like, 
Brand Builders Group, we're, this is our fifth year in business. We're likely to hit eight figures this year, get really close to it. We don't have millions of followers. We don't, like, I think a lot of times people are super impressed by like, look at all the followers this person has. What you really would be more impressed by is Thank you. look how few followers Thank they have you. and how Thank much you. money they Thank made. Thank you. They made right. from them. Right. As CEO of Social Curator, I have to tell you that I talk to business owners with tens of thousands of followers who can't break six figures. And then I see people with hundreds of followers who are doing multiple seven figures. Yep. It has nothing to do with the follower count at all. So out here, uh, just co-signing on that. So please take it away. Sorry. No, I love that. So that that that's it. And you go, Look, I mean, we pay more money for specialists, right? We we pay more money. So this is here's a content marketing strategy thing. So you know, we're we're starting to move into what we would call phase two, which is our our marketing phase. Um, I mentioned on the first one, we have four phases, and there's like three there's three stops in each phase. Well, when we get into marketing, our entire content marketing strategy is so simple. Here's what we do: we teach our clients to give away everything you know for free but in small bite-sized chunks and in all random miscellaneous order. You can teach everything you know for free, but in small bite-sized chunks and in all random miscellaneous order. And here's why. Today, there's so much information in the world. People don't pay for information. They pay for organization and application. Ooh. They Ooh. don't pay for information. What they're paying for is organization and they're especially paying for application. It's not just, what do you know? It's help me apply it to my life. Just like what you, you did with us, right? It's one thing for me to teach it to you. It's another to come spend two days and we take you through the entire process. That's helping you apply it to you. People pay more for application because it's the application of that knowledge and that wisdom customized directly to them at their specific moment in the specific way they need it at that time. And people pay more money for that. And so um, that's, you know, pretty much everything we know is out there for free somewhere on somebody's podcast or some blog that I did one time or like on our podcast or, you know, all these reels or whatever. But, but it's not, it's not the same as sitting down and having someone go, okay, this is the part you need right here and right here, do this and pause the video. Let me teach you this technique and that thing and, and, and pull it together. And um, so it becomes actually, you know, very, very tactical. And on the topic of monetization, by the way, we didn't spend much time talking about this, but there's actually only five ways. There's five primary ways to monetize a personal brand. So we, we call these the paids. So P-A-I-D-S and, and PAIDS is an acronym. And this, this idea is to go, there's a big difference between a pile of followers and a pile of cash, right? And we know a lot of people who are Twitter rich, but they're dollar broke, baby. Like that's what you were just, <laughs> that's, what, that's what you were just talking about, right? They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. There's lots of people with lots of followers who are struggling to monetize it. And, and people think, well, hey, they must be rich. It's like, no, it's it's not as easy as you would think, but right. it's the same vehicles for all of us. So these are the paid, so P-A-I-D-S. So the P is a physical product. So mm -hmm. you build an audience, you sell them a physical product, right? I mean, if you're Elon Musk, you sell them a Tesla. If you're Sarah Blakely, you sell them Spanx, but the average person might sell, might sell, you know, a clothing line, or it, it a could book. be a, a day planner, or it could be a self-published book. Like you, you create some physical product could be a water bottle and mm. uh, you, you, you sell them a physical product. The A in paid is ads and affiliates. Mm. So this one is interesting. You don't, you don't sell your audience, anything you sell other people access to your audience. So all you're doing is you're throwing a big party and then you're letting people sponsor it so that they can get their logo in front of your people. So that's the A. Then the I is information products. Uh, so uh, uh, this is like courses and memberships and uh, certifications and assessments. And then the D is deals. So this is brand deals, TV deals, movie deals, licensing deals, royalty deals. And then the S is services. Services are the fastest way to monetize your personal brand. It's 
the, the, the fastest path to cash is to sell more of what you're already doing for most of us. So that's why a lot of our clients are actually professional service providers. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're real estate agents, they're accountants, they're, they're chiropractors, they're chefs, right? They're just using their personal brand to drive leads to sell more of the thing yep. that they already do. Yep. Um, and so those are really the only five ways to monetize a personal brand. Now, services are the fastest path to cash. Um, and we can talk about how to sell high dollar offers quickly and easily, which is what our whole business is. So we can talk about that. But, but one thing before that is when you select your business model, we encourage people to look for something that we call the dares. So, so D-A-R-E-S, things that are digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and scalable. The dream. The dream. The dream. The dream. Digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and scalable is the perfect business model, right? It has no physical product. Like you have to, there's no manufacturing, no shipping costs, no tariffs. It's automated, meaning it's the customer's completely self-serve. It's recurring. People pay you over and over. Evergreen, it, it never needs to be updated. And then Amen. S- Amen. Is scalable. So there's lots of ways to make money. It's not what's the way to make money. There's not a right answer with any of this. There's only your answer, your right answer. It's figuring out what is the best way that makes sense for you. And the only, the, the, the wrong answer is to try to do all of it. The wrong answer is to try to make it all happen because when you have diluted focus, you get diluted results. And that's why most personal brands fail and don't make money. Mm. So, um, instead of going the route of selling high ticket offers with ease, okay, I know that that would serve a a a, a portion of podcast listeners, but yep. what I know with certainty would serve every listener is how do we use what we know about our brand to generate leads? Because a lead for a physical product, a digital product, a service, like a brand, um, and affiliates. Yeah. would start with the amount of leads that one is getting. How do we start leveraging the work that we've done on the personal branding side to start really driving in the leads? Love it. So there's 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 two different areas that I would talk about. One is how do you generate leads online? The other is how do you generate leads offline? And nobody talks about offline. Um, and I would love to talk about it because referrals is the fastest way to 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 make big bucks is, is 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 to get referrals. So we could talk about that, but but to talk about online, because I know a lot of your audience has some type of online following, and you don't need millions of followers to make millions of dollars. Uh, it's super simple. Here's here's the secret. I'll tell you I'll tell you the the concept, and then I'll give you a technique. Okay, the concept is this: the dollars are in the DMs. The Amen. Dollars are in the bro, DMs. Bro, we've been singing the same song, dude, on a one string <laughs> fiddle, and nobody's listening to my music. But I'm like, yo, yo, it is the one to one. Yes, go on, say more. It's, it is one to one. It is that you don't sell in front of your whole audience, right? You sell in one on one situations. It's similar to what we do when we go out and we speak for free, and then we offer free calls. We don't stand on stage and try to like get people to run to the back of the room and throw their credit card down, right? Yep. That is going to turn off some portion of the audience. It's going to feel awkward and slimy. And and more than 90% of the room is not a candidate for it. And so you're not serving 90% of the room. That's right. But there's 10% of that room that really, really does need it. And in order to serve them, you go create a one-on-one -on -one environment. Well, you can do this on social media all day, every day. And here's where it happens. And this is so funny. It happens, it starts in the comments. Mm -hmm. And what blows my mind is how people work so hard to put out all this content, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, if they're, and hopefully they're using Social Curator. And so you're like helping them, right? So they're, <laughs> amen, amen, they're, they're amen. cranking it out, but they're, they're still cranking out content. And then what happens is people leave comments and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. too busy. I'm too busy for the comments. Mm -hmm. I'm too busy. I, I can't, I don't have time for these comments. It's, we almost get annoyed by like all these comments that people are leaving. And what you have to realize is when somebody leaves a comment, that is the equivalent of them saying, I like you. Mm -hmm. I trust you. 
I'm into what you are saying. Amen. Which means they are one step away from saying, I will buy from you. Yep. So what happens is when somebody leaves a comment, if it's a new person, you you know, typically want to reply back with something, you know, uh, honest and genuine and real. But if it's a new person who say, hey, thank you so much for the comment. It's great to meet you. Um, I actually, uh, I, it looks like we're meeting for the first time. I sent you a DM. And just like that, we've moved the conversation out of comments and the public profile. So you put out great content, which Jasmine teaches you how to do and gives you all these tools to do it. Then there's a comment. Then you reply to that comment, move it into the DMs, and you're going to use a technique called the four Fs. And this is so simple. And I'm, I mean, it. We have, we have made hundreds of thousands of dollars. We actually track this with UTMs. So, um, a UTM is a universal tracking method for those of you who don't know. It's a way to find the source of where that lead is coming from. Okay, but next. Yep. So you got. Um, so now you're in the DMs. So let's say Jasmine leaves me a comment, and I say, Jasmine, thank you so much for your comment. And here's F1. How did you find me? So F1 is how did you find me? Oh, you know, my friend told me about you, or I saw you speak, or I heard you on the show, or I saw your ad, or I heard you on the radio ad, or like they found you somehow, right? How did you find me? I want to know that anyways, because it tells me about like my marketing, which yeah. marketing is working. And I say, awesome. And then here's F2. What was your favorite part of what you saw? Or what was your favorite? What was your favorite part of that video? What was your favorite part of that interview? What was? What did you like about what you've seen so far? Or what is? What is the favorite thing you've seen from us uh, so far? And they'll say something. And then F three, and here's where it starts to turn. And this is the magic. You say, "Tell me about your future goals. Tell me about your future goals. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you? What are you? What are you after?" And here's the thing, about 80% of those people are going to say something related to the services you provide. That's why they're following you in the first right. place. Right. They're following you because they're trying to do something in their life, and that's why your content is relevant to them. And so they're going to say some goal. And this is powerful because most of the time when we meet somebody, we say, where are you from? Tell me about your childhood. Where'd you go to school? We ask everyone we meet, we talk about the past. Very, very few people ever ask you about your future, where you're going, mm -hmm. what are your dreams, mm -hmm. what are your goals? Tell me about your hopes, your ambitions. Why did you get into this business? Tell me about your future. Chances are, if they're still with you by that point, they're going to say something that's related to what you can help them with. And then F4 is, hey, did you know we actually help people achieve that? I would love to set up a free call with you to learn more about what your vision is to see if we can help. So F4 is free. So how did you find me? What was your favorite part? Tell me about your future goals and let's do a free call. And then now, you just as a point of clarity, this is not all happening in one DM. It's like a series of DMs that slowly yeah. build trust. Do I hear that correctly? So it's like, how'd you find me? That person says, uh, I saw you in an ad. Awesome. What was your favorite thing about that, uh, that video? And then they say this. And then they're like, so tell me about your future. Oh, this is total lead warming. This is total priming. This is building trust. This is showing somebody that if you care about the conversation before the monetization, they are more likely for the conversion. Brilliant. Amen. Brilliant. Yeah, that's Brilliant. It. Brilliant. And, and once you have a call with somebody, like people are afraid of hopping on the phone. Like, it's like, I don't know why. Like, that's how you change lives is you talk to people. You just have a conversation with them. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, the whole, so, so we have a whole nother program called Pressure Free Persuasion, which is just teaching sales, the art of pressure free persuasion. And all you have to do is, is when you hop on the phone, you say, tell me about your dream. What are you trying to accomplish? And then you say, what are what are the what's the obstacle that's blocking you? What's holding you back? And then you say, if I could show you something that would help you overcome that obstacle to achieve that dream, is that something you'd be open minded to? And if they say yes, then you go, let me show it to you. And then at the end, you say, what did you think? Could you see how that would help you? And if they say yes, then you say, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to work together? And then you're and then you have a customer. Right. And if at some point they're not a fit, they will self eject. 
-hmm. right? You don't have to pressure people. You don't have to manipulate them. You don't have to sell to them. You don't have, you can just ask them questions and mm -hmm. they will self, they will leave a comment. They'll see a video. They'll leave a comment. They'll engage with you. They'll answer a few questions. They'll hop on a call. They'll answer a few more questions. And ultimately the path will reveal itself that you can be a good fit for them. And that's a way to generate leads for anything, any, any product, any service, um, you know, and if you're doing more like e-commerce stuff, then instead of a free call, you'd say, check out this free video on a hundred percent. So for people who are like, yeah, but I'm not selling like a $10,000 coaching program or a $2,000 course um, that we have found to be really effective is here is a free video series. Here is a free video. Here is a PDF. And what you're saying is not just sign up for something. What you're ultimately saying is this is going to serve you so well beyond the DM. And once they, for us in our business structures, once they exchange on email, then we put them in like a cultivating email series. That's just like, this is more about who we are. Like feel free to respond and our customer service team will take care of you. And so what we want to do is cultivate the transaction since our transaction is just $49 a month for a subscription. A phone call may or may not be the best use of our time and resources since we're going after so many leads simultaneously, but yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. So for lower dollar offers, but, but here's, here's another little thing. We call this the rule of 10 and the rule of 10 says, Strive to give them 10 times the value Amen. for free before you ask them to buy something, right? If someone's paying $49 a month with you, it's because they've gotten hundreds and thousands and ten th tens of thousands of dollars in free training from you online to where it's almost like, it's almost like I were paying in rears. It's almost like I feel like I'm, I'm paying because you've given me so much value in advance. And that's the easy way to sell without being slimy is going, just go serve the world. Just go change lives. I mean, isn't that what you said, right? Isn't that what you said in the first place? Didn't you say you wanted to change lives? Change lives, push record, put out the content. What do you have to lose giving away free videos and free trainings and free webinars and free PDFs? Nothing. Worst case scenario, you change the world. Best case scenario, you create a whole bunch of fans who eventually become customers. And I think that's what people- While changing need the world. While changing the world also, right? You get to change the world and you get paid very, very well for it. So that's it. You just got to give, Slow serve clap, first. Bro. Slow clap. This is the Hallmark movie channel. Slow this clap. is when the soldier comes back during Christmas and he proposes like, this is this is that moment. I, I, I drank the Kool-Aid and, you know, just as a, a personal testament is we did not work together for years. For years, I've met you five years ago, six mm -hmm. years ago. And what did we do? Stayed in contact, had you on my podcast about a year ago, just watched what you did, continue to have other people say great things about you. And how we spawned this conversation was a small gift that you and AJ had sent for Christmas. And it was a watercolor, a watercolor painting of myself, my husband, and my daughter. And it was, oh, funny, I'm going through this rebirth and I received this. It was the alchemy of five years, six years of watching, seeing what it is you're doing, being given something at the right time for us to cultivate a working relationship. And so I'm just as a testament, you practice what you preach. I've experienced it. And what you give to these podcast listeners is 10X. Every time you come on, it's just 10X, 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 ad infinitum. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for walking the walk and talking the talk. And um, I know that some people have asked uh, privately, like, okay, so how was your experience? And so I didn't want to have private conversations with people. I wanted to have a very public conversation with people. And so this is just the start of where things are for me and my journey. And Rory, for people who want to go and get more information on how they could do the same for their business or like number one, follow Rory on social media, follow brand builders because they literally, <laughs> and don't be surprised when you leave a comment, they're like, I just sent you a DM. Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised when that happens. How, how do people go deeper? How do we find more? How do we uh, change lives and hopefully best case scenario, change the world and hopefully best case scenarios serve people really well and find a way to make a living doing it. 
Yeah, totally. You just, you go to freebrandcall.com forward slash Jasmine star. And this is, you know, the only work we, we do, like we do one-on-one -on -one work with people. Like that's our goal is to get to know you. And so the first call we do with everyone is free. We'll show you the overview of the entire strategy. Like on the very first call, we'll want to hear your dream. We'll want to see like, what business are you in? And then we will literally share with you the entire playbook for what we're, what we're using to try to help some of the biggest personal brands in the world to, to reach more people. And you might be a fit to work together. If you are, we'll talk about that. If you're not, we'll probably refer you to somebody else or like point you in another direction. Or it's just like what you said, Jasmine, it's we'll just stay in touch. Part mm -hmm. of the goal here is to automate trust, is mm -hmm. to just add value. And it's not to keep score. Like, frankly, I, I never thought you would be a client of ours. <laughs> never thought you would be a client. Never even, it never even crossed my mind. The, we don't send gifts to people hoping they're gonna be clients. What you do, I mean, the best form of marketing there is, is first of all, to care. Amen. To like care about people. Amen. To go, I actually give a crap that our clients, not just that they buy, right? The sale is not done when someone buys. The sale is finished when the client experiences the result that they paid you for. And you have to care about delivering all the way through to where they get they get that result and, and they create that transformation. And that's the other part about marketing is the best form of marketing in the world is a transformed life. It is somebody who has done something as a result of you and you go, yeah, it like what you said, you have enough people come to you and say, hey, these guys are really good. Hey, they actually did, they, they actually helped me. I learned something from them. And ultimately it all shakes out. So it comes back to that, you know, give away everything, you know, for free in small bite-sized chunks, because you always get paid for how hard you work. You always get paid for what you give away. Sometimes mm. you get paid immediately, like in that moment. A lot of times you get paid in the future. You get paid uh, in, you know, four years from now for something that you did four years ago, but you always get paid Amen. eventually. You can't right. outgive God. You can't outgive the universe and you can't outserve people and it not come back to you. So anyways, you know, just don't always focus on the width of your reach, but the depth of your impact and give, give, give. And um, we'd love to talk to you. So freebrandcall.com slash Jasmine Star. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why this man has successfully gone and competed in like the world champion of speaking. Ray <laughs> Vaden, man, if there was a brother with a silver tongue, it would be you. Thank you for using the, the power of your words to change lives. Thank you for being on this journey with me. I know we're just getting started. I know there's a lot more for me to go deeper with. And I know that there's a lot more for me to go back and one day be like, I got this presentation. Are we going to sit here and are we going to watch the reviews again? Are you going to tell me how to get better? Because this is all that business is, is finding small ways to continue getting better. Thank you a thousand times over. Genuinely, thank you. I couldn't say enough good things about you. Thank you, friend. I hope you have a beautiful day. Oh, my pleasure, friend. Much love.